phase three. Phase three will be learning. Learning and practicing. I really want to get my head around behavior trees and blackboards and so on. And once I have that understanding, I think what I'll do is I'll do some practice with it. Then I'll work on blueprints for units. I'll redo them a little bit. I also want to learn a little bit about input controls. Once those are set, then I think I'll be ready to work on the functionality of the units. So the first thing I'm going to do today is make breakfast. Then the second thing I'm going to do is learn blackboards. Feeling fed, feeling comfortable, time to start learning about behavior trees. <laughs> okay, so here's where I have to admit a bit of a fault. I have this nasty habit of when I am working on something that's really challenging, that's really testing my brain, I default to doing menial work <laughs> to, to feel productive when your problem solving, the rate of your work is slower, so I feel the need to make the rate of work faster. It's not a helpful habit, but in this case, I mean, it did prove to be a useful thing, if maybe a little bit weird. Let me show you what I did. Okay, so what I did was I decided I was tired of doing print statements. You pull something out and you type, you know, print string and then you have all this stuff and you have to plug it all in. And I like to set the duration um, very small so that it essentially just stays on screen at all time rather than looping. And I like to set the colors so that I know what values are what at kind of a glance, particularly what kind of value I'm expecting. Um, so I was getting tired of doing that. So I elected to just create my own thing, but it proved useful. So what this basically is, is I learned what a macro library is and created a macro library. And within that macro library, I created this abomination that basically goes through and appends some text that you define to it. And then basically checks, you know, is the float or this ridiculous value is the Boolean this ridiculous value is the integer this ridiculous value and those ridiculous values are all the defaults if it's a ridiculous value it doesn't bother printing otherwise it just prints zero for everything so basically it just goes through and checks which value isn't ridiculous and whatever value isn't ridiculous it appends that little piece of text and then prints it out so this is super useful for me in a weird way because let's say i'm i'm here in the camera movement for example where was I? Rotating camera. That was it. Um, so what I can do here is I can come out of, out of this and any blueprint anywhere in the project and type in print glow. And you can see I have my global print. And then I can put that there. And this is a vector 2D. So I'll plug it into the vector 2D. I'll call it mouse position. And then bingo. Done. Now I compile, save, play. And as you can see at the top, in the blue, it is getting my mouse position, which is great. And that one there that you see is the middle mouse click, which for some reason I don't think I've hooked up correctly. 
but so I could sit there and basically run stats down the side of the screen here which is going to be very useful for telling me what I've got. Oh, I already have one there, as you can see. It shows me in pink what units I have selected and names them, which is useful. So anyhow, that was a great distraction. Um, back to actual game development now, but I mean, at least I learned what a macro library was, right? Okay, so I just had one hell of a wild ride. I already showed you the rotation, which I'm very proud of, um, but now I think I pretty much have the control scheme down, at least as far as like mouse navigation and camera movement that I want. Like I'm essentially aiming for like command and conquer controls here. So I've got it so that all the associated things, right mouse button, left mouse button, whether they're holding, whether they're not holding, got all that pretty much sorted. I don't want to show it to you. Okay, so this giant fucking blob of code here um, is basically me a checking to see if you're holding down the button and if you do it does the scrubby thing uh, the scrubby scroll which I'll, I'll show you in a sec and then if not it checks to see if you just did a scrub and if you didn't just do a scrub then it tells the units where to go I'm gonna show you I'm so fucking excited about this that I'm gonna show it to you in the big boy view mode whambo okay so check this out so what I'm going to do is you could still scroll, you know, the good old fashioned way like this, where you move, you know, to the edge of the screen, but you can also hold the right mouse button down and do like a scrubby scroll. Right. And that's a, that's a common feature in uh, the command and conquer games. I think it's Starcraft. You hold down the middle mouse button, but I much prefer the right mouse button. Middle mouse button does the ro camera rotation and you can click to snap it back and all of the various translations and rotations work depending, like work with the rotation of your camera, which uh, I actually owe some of the Skypower guys, I owe David and uh, Andrew some help with that. As I discovered that you can tell a vector apparently what direction it's supposed to go. Now here comes the big step. I'm using the right mouse button. That's typically the give unit order button. And what was happening before was I would scroll and as soon as I let go, it would give them a command like this. Now I'm, I'm faking it, but that's basically what it would do. Now, as you can see, I'm scrubbing around with the right mouse button and it's not messing with the movement of the thing. But if I just click it, it says, oh, OK, you want me to go there? Now I have to fine tune it a little bit because as it stands right now, it's a little bit delayed, but yeah, pretty, uh, pretty sweet. Shit. So you can do this, I can zoom out all the way, and I can rotate around and say, go attack over here. And my little guys will uh, meander their way up this ramp and make their way over. It's coming together. So I'm going to count this as like camera model, numero uno, prototype, working. Now I'm going to move on to some of the more unfortunately challenging stuff. What do I mean by unfortunately challenging stuff? I mean addressing the big clumped up elephant in the room, getting units to move properly. I've been putting this off. This is what I was supposed to be doing this morning, uh, but I elected to make a printing system and the camera system instead. But basically it means I've got to go in and learn behavior trees and like how to tell AIs where to go because even though the units aren't thinking on their own it's important to remember that every unit in a strategy every thing in a strategy game every building every unit every whatever is technically thinking and waiting for criteria right they are all things that are have stimuli around them whether it's they need to navigate the environment they need to keep an eye out for enemies it only gets more complicated when you give them like guard controls and like other things like that once I understand how the blue, no, not the blueprints, sorry, the blackboard and the behavior trees work, I think it's not going to be as devastating as I'm thinking, but I'm just sort of not looking forward to trying to sort this out because I feel like it's going to be a lot of really annoying, complicated stuff, and I'm just not about that today. But for now, I'm going to relish in my victory.